Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the last session of the Microcredential Forum. Uh, this ses session is Business and Healthcare Partnerships, Building a Collaborative Development and Delivery Microcredentialing Model. Uh, my name is Elisa Arnold. I am a Research and Foresight Associate at eCampus Ontario, and I focus on what might happen in the future to help the education sector plan for today. And I'm thrilled to introduce uh, your presenters for this session. Uh, Michelle Mouton is a senior instructional designer at Ontario Tech Talent. Uh, she has experience in various post-secondary roles uh, centered around online learning and program quality. And recently, after 12 years in the college system, she decided to focus on her first love, uh, designing online learning experiences that directly support learners in finding meaningful employment. And that's why she's at Ontario Tech Talent. And um, she is uh, presenting with Melanie Murphy, who is a registered nurse at Ontario Shores. And um, Melanie specializes in mental health and gerontology, and she also has worked in various roles, uh, including inpatient, outpatient, and crisis support. And she's currently working as a clinical educator uh, on the professional practice team. And they are going to talk about the work they've done together. Thank you very much, Elisa. Hi, everybody. So I'm going to kick it off and get us started. I just want to welcome everyone and appreciate the time that you're spending with us while we share our experiences with you in building collaborative development and delivery micro-credential micro models. So before we sort of give a little bit more just about ourselves and what we're doing, I would like to do a quick poll uh, to assist us in knowing what types of roles that you're currently in so that we can ensure that the direction we take this discussion best suits you, the interests you have in your current role. So if we can have poll number one. And we'll just have about 30 seconds max on this. Okay, has everyone had a chance to put in their vote? If we could have the results, that would be great. We're gonna share that with everyone. All right, so we have, or we got a good range of people. Those, those are pretty much what we're expecting. <clears throat> the other, if you wanna put in the chat, what other is, I, Mel and I would love to know. But I do, I do believe we're going to aim this at, at the right people. So thank you very much. And we'll close that. What we're going to do is Mal and I are going to talk a little bit about our project and really thinking in terms of building micro-credentials, not as one institution creating one unit, but actually thinking of it as a microcosm within a community. So. Ontario Shores is a mental health institute in Whitby. Ontario Tech Talent, while a remote business, actually is a subsidiary of Ontario Tech University, which is in Oshawa. So we really want to make sure that we serve the community around us. We're very community focused. And the work that we do is about collaborating and building connections. And we're going to use the sort of the, the analogy of, of a road, of a pathway, connecting all these various disparate pieces of our community in order to create robust learning that is going to support our future upskilling and reskilling needs. So I'll let Mel just give you, you know, we've been introduced, but just tell you a little bit about maybe what, what she's up to and why this project started. So well, hi, uh, Elisa introduced me very nicely. Uh, I'm a registered nurse currently working as a clinical nurse educator uh, in our professional practice team at Ontario Shores. So just to give a little bit of background about Ontario Shores itself, if you haven't heard of it, um, we are a public teaching hospital. We're located in Whitby, Ontario. Uh, we provide a range of specialized assessment and treatment services. Uh, we do have uh, forensic units, adult units, geriatric units, and adolescent, as well as uh, dual diagnostics. And we have a variety of outpatient services as well. Uh, so all of our specialization is, is within psychiatric. Um, and as a healthcare organization, we really have been challenged and faced with 
constraints that we've all seen within the healthcare system, whether you're within the system or you're outside of it, hearing it in the news, uh, we know that there's a lot of uh, uh, constraints and faced by the system. Um, so we know that there's a lot of, there's a huge mental health need, especially after the pandemic, we've noticed that there has been a, a great increase of, of uh, referrals and support needed uh, for those suffering with mental health. Um, and we noticed that a lot of our nurses, especially our new grads, they don't have a lot of experience. They don't get a lot of that within their, their teaching. Um, and even those who are perhaps in acute care and they're, they're traveling over to psychiatric care. Um, so we really wanted to have a focus on nurses as a large group of healthcare professionals um, and provide those micro credentials and those credentialing um, to increase the capacity of our um, of our workforce, because we know that, again, we have issues with that workforce. We want to do our best to support those who are new to the field, or maybe in it for a while, and they just want to kind of uh, refresh their skills. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about Ontario Shores and what, what we are going for. Um, I have a lot of passion about this. My uh, role right now in professional practice is educating, so really creating those materials for our staff and other staff in other healthcare settings is such an exciting uh, opportunity. Um, so really excited to work with talent and, and present to you what we've done so far. Yeah, Michelle? thanks, Mel. That's a great, a great uh, explanation. So I'm going to speak a little bit about talent, I think, as we weave our narration through our, our cycle. Um, what I'll be showing you is our roadmap. And the roadmap is really what sort of the structure of the rest of this conversation. And it's talking through what, uh, how we develop. And so I thought it'd be important for us to break it down um, for Mel and I to be able to explain at each point how this collaboration works, because it is a unique model. It's, it's uh, in... I would say an experiment that we have tried that the CEO of Talent, Rachel Sumner, and the leadership at Ontario Shores jumped into with great passion. And we, we're very pleased to be able to sort of step you quickly through this process. And what I really hope that you gain from this is that you think about your own models, how your own institutions work, both with um, business and with employers, to consider ways that you can optimize your relationships because this really is a story about relationships which we're going to talk about so really the, the the cycle really is about choosing the topics sourcing subject matter experts because they're the key going through a development cycle then marketing promotion and sales deploying the learner support which is the little ice cream truck which is my absolute favorite little guy there uh, stakeholders and feedback it's very very important and Mel will talk about that and then obviously revision, revisions and re relaunch so I'm going to pass it on to Mel because choosing the topics is really um, focused on on Terry Shill's needs. Thanks Michelle. Um, so in terms of choosing of topics for us, uh, someone who's been in this, the field for quite some time, about 12 years, um, and had a lot of experience with others who've been in the field, as well as uh, being a preceptor for new grads, knowing kind of the, the areas of growth that definitely have been identified. Um, we did have ongoing brain ses uh, brainstorming sessions um, with appropriate stakeholders. So again, that includes uh, new grads, uh, perhaps their preceptors or their uh, facility, or sorry, faculty advisors at the, at the uh, universities. Um, and then just identifying those priority needs within that. Um, we also provided some national surveys that were sent out to frontline nurses. We really wanted to make sure we had that feedback um, from the frontline nurses because they know best what is kind of missing with their skills, especially with our, our new uh, orientees. Um, so as someone who facilitates the orientation for Ontario Shores, I always reach out to that those new staff members who've come on who maybe don't have a lot of experience in mental health. I just want to get some uh, ideas of, of how to uh, enhance their, their skills. So that's kind of where we got some of the ideas as well. Uh, we also had a full day workshop with various clinicians, so not just nurses, but other areas that might see some, uh, some uh, uh, in areas for improvement, um, including management and senior management, but we also, again, want to make sure we really focus on that front line and who's out there and who really knows what is needed. Um, so that's kind of some of the ideas of how we identify topics. Um, again, a lot of it is those focus groups, meetings, and interviews with uh, a lot of the staff that are in front line. And 
think of the next one that'll kind of tie us into uh, what we want to see uh, for you on your side for our um, our next poll. Um, how your organization chooses topics for micro credentials could be good to kind of have that feedback from you as well. And if you're okay to share that, um, Lisa. That's great, yeah. So it looks like very similar to what we have been doing so far. Um, and instead of students, it'd be staff, <laughs> but definitely getting those faculty feedback as well. Um, we do have a research team at Ontario Shores as well, who we also got some feedback from. So that's really good that you guys are, are also um, are having that uh, department as well. Um, focus groups again, and topic is often decided on. So I'm just wondering if anyone has any comments, if you're comfortable, and you can even put it in the chat of, uh, it, it, some mentioned that the topic is often decided without clear data. So, you know, what, what kind of has uh, brought that forward? You know, where were you able to actually find the topics that you needed? Um, I don't know, Michelle, if you wanted to think about other questions we can perhaps ask. Sure, no, that's great. And, and please, yes, yeah, Romani, please feel free to use the chat. It's being moderated. So at any time, just give a shout out. We, we're um, happy to not just save questions for the end. We're happy to be interrupted and support you as we go along. So if we can close that poll and move on to the next slide, that would be great. Sure. So that's me again. Um, we really want to look at, so our SMEs are our subject matter experts. Um, other facilities might have different ways of, of describing them, but that's the way that we have. Um, and that's really how we're going to call out and find these subject matter experts. So with our team at Ontario Shores, especially in professional practice, we are heavily involved in the teams and, and the programs. So we do have a really good idea of who would be a good person to reach out to, who has that experience who has perhaps taught in the past. A lot of our staff actually teach separately at uh, universities and colleges, so it's really great to have their input as well. Um, so in terms of, uh, of getting those uh, subject matter experts, we had our director of research and academic send out a call for all our clinicians um, to participate. Um, we had advertisements within our internal um, newsletters and internet. And then we did present that SM, uh, sorry, forward that SME role to um, management um, so that way we were able to get some feedback from them some input from them they would know their their colleagues or their clinicians really well and what experience that they've had um, we found that we got so many um, excited people that really wanted to be involved with the program and we made sure that we did have protected time for them because it is uh, it can be very time consuming in terms of creating the content um, so that was one thing that we identified is that there was going to be, excuse me, protected time. So that brings us into that uh, next piece for Michelle. Super. So after Ontario Shores has done their great work, uh, deciding on the most appropriate topic, finding the subject matter experts, they uh, talent jumps in with at full throttle. We start by launching the development cycle. We work on a 13, on average, a 13 week cycle which includes five phases. I'm not gonna go into those too much detail, but uh, really we, we, we keep it very structured, very focused on, on scheduling milestones and deliverables. And the, we talent provides the instructional designers, all the tools, licenses, the learning management system, everything that's needed to, to do the actual construction work other than obviously, obviously the subject matter experts. And we, we focus a lot on relationships. I can't tell you, I can't overemphasize enough how we've built so many relationships between talent and Ontario Shores. And that's a big part of the success and why we have so many SMEs um, very excited about you know, helping out. They want to be involved in our projects because we've developed a very good working relationship. And part of that is, you know, obviously through through um, 
through respect and, and communication, but we we meet regularly as in sort of large teams, small teams, the instructional designer and the SMEs and professional practitioners meet weekly. Uh, we collaborate on Google uh, Drive so that we don't have version issues. Um, and we make sure that the SMEs feel very supported and we know that they're busy we're very, you know, as all instructional designers know, the SMEs are our greatest asset, but also sometimes just the, the scarcest resource and professional practice steps in many times to support the SMEs and fill in any gaps. Uh, one great thing about professional practice is most of the members of that team are RNs. So for example, if um, I as an instructional designer working with a PhD in psychiatry talking about mental health, I might need to refer back to professional practice and say, what does this look like on the floor? Because one thing that's really important is not just the, the cycles and the process of, of building, but well, I can't overemphasize the fact of competency-based learning. So talent focuses on competency-based. It's, it's You need to know, but the knowledge is the foundation for demonstrated skills and applied action in real you know we will heard this i know i'm, pre I'm preaching to the choir um, in order to make sure that we really focus on this our very first discussion on the very first day is about about the competency and the assessment we call them skills assessment activities so what one or several activities do we need to see someone do on the floor as if they were in the unit in order for someone their manager say to say yes I feel confident that person is competent in this area now obviously we're not assessing them on the floor but we use case studies and authentic assessments and um, I'm gonna Mel's gonna show you some ideas of how we work but we collaborate a lot with professional practice with our SMEs with our internal team at Talent to really make sure the assessment is the foundation of everything that then cascades from it uh, and it's, I know often special subject matter experts will kind of like, you know, like little little ants kind of go in different directions. And the job of, an, of instructional designers and professional practices always bring it back to that those assessments because we ultimately we want to have a 100% success rate. We want to make sure that learners, we're not trying to trick them, but we're trying to practice and align their learning with the actual assessment. And so the assessments are focused on at the very beginning of the, de 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 sorry, the design, as well as the actual content delivery. I'm going to let Mel talk a little bit about some of the fun she has, because she probably has one of the best roles. They get to play a lot at professional practice. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually my favorite project. Um, so I did notice that someone had asked a question about the SME. So it kind of does tie into what we're talking about now. Um, in terms of compensation, it is part of their role at Ontario Shores. We have been very fortunate that um, a lot of our, our clinicians are excited about uh, a continuing education and really want to support that. So we haven't had a lot of issues in terms of compensating, but definitely that blocking of the time has been very successful with that piece. Um, and their exact roles, uh, again, is that content development, and we're there as professional practice to guide them through that. We want to make sure that we're not being uh, too overburdened in terms of the amount of content. We want to be very concise with what we're looking for based on the skills that we want to verify. Um, so as a professional practice leader, a lot of times I do have to make sure that those skills are being verified on the unit, whether it be through micro credentials or not. So it does help me to uh, to to see what would be appropriate for each of the micro credentials. Um, and they do have some input on instructional design. They definitely have great ideas for activities we could do, skills verification that we can do. Um, so again, as Michelle mentioned, we try to make it very fun and interactive. So there is a lot of activities included and, and the subject matter experts have been amazing at, at creating some ideas. Um, in terms of how many hours of learning are developed within the 13 week development cycle, would that be, uh, Michelle, the two to three hours per week for the learners? Yeah, so we, because it's competency based and you know it's online as, as i'm sure a lot of you know it's 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 every learn is going to go at their own speed we say two to three hours three is really stretching it that is um if there's lots of interruptions and and uh 
want to rewatch and reread and and spend lots of time because we do have a very we, we de develop a very comprehensive a community of practice for each cohort. So it does depend on how engaged they are in that. Um, I would say it, you know, if someone, if a learner goes through the content at a, you know, a brisk pace and, and goes through all the content and spends time in the community of practice um, without too many, you know, too many issues, it, it's probably a one and a half hours to two, um, but definitely can stretch out to three. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Michelle. Um, yeah, so as, as I mentioned, in terms of our roles, um, it's really solidifying that nursing perspective, that frontline, and what is really needed for the skills that we want to see um, to give that badge, to say that they've passed this micro-credential and they're good to, to provide that support, whether it be uh, trauma-informed care or mental status assessment, et cetera. Those are a couple that we've done so far. Um, so just for fun, I could show you an example of one of the activities that we created from professional practice. And as Michelle mentioned, it's really fun because now we are uh, apparently voice actors as well. <laughs> so Mel, can I just interrupt you? I just yeah. want to clarify that question before, before you jump in there. Sure. Um, it does ask about development within a 13 week development cycle. Just to clarify um, the, when the final product, when we actually um, launch it is six weeks in length. So we take 13 weeks from very beginning to launch date to create six modules, six weeks of content that are on average two-ish hours per week for the learner. So I just want to make sure that I, I had made that clear. Thank you. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to stop my sharing my screen just so I can make sure I'm sharing the appropriate thing. Um, this is an example of our... Um, current uh, micro-credential is actually running right now. I'm actually the skills coach for it. Um, it's the foundations in mental health. So that one uh, is, we had one of the videos where we created, I'm just going to make sure, sorry, I just want to make sure I'm sharing my um, volume as well. Where we create a video. So we created a case study um, and we actually acted out the voicing for the video. It's a very short one, so I can show you that. Um, so again, we created a case study for uh, them to read, and this is one of the skills verification activities. Um, and then we asked them to watch the video, and then based on their assessment through the video, um, they can do their, uh, their SOAPY note, it's called. So their subjective, objective data, their assessment, and their planning for this patient. So that really helps us to identify if they can, uh, that they understand the content that was provided and how to support our patients when they're um, in this state. Um, so I'm going to play this video so you can see. Hi, James. How are you today? I'm fine. Are you sure? You look a little upset. Well, why wouldn't I be upset, Stacy? I know he's coming. Who's coming, James? The head of the CIA. He was here last night. I saw him. Like here as in on the US? Yes, here. That must be really scary, James. But I can assure you he was not here. Are you worried someone's going to hurt you? You know nothing. He was here. I saw him. James, are your arms bothering you? It's the bugs. I can't get them off of me. I'm so itchy. Can I see your arms? No. Why would I show you so you can report back to the big boss? Who is the big boss, James? I know you're working for them, Stacy. I'm not stupid. I just want to see if there's anything get, I can do. Get away. Do. Get away from me. So that's just an example. So those are actually my colleagues that I work with in professional practice, uh, the voicing. Um, so that's an example of what you would actually see on the front line on the unit uh, with one of our um, patients who are currently experiencing psychosis. Um, so it's really good for them to see that front uh, hand. And then from there, they can go into their skills verification when they click on this button here. And that does allow them to answer. I hope I'm sharing that. It does allow them yep. to answer. Yeah, thank you. I'm sharing. Yeah, perfect. Um, their assessment, uh, what they see with this patient, um, and what their plan will be for this patient. And this is really a, a great skills that we can verify to say, yep, when that nurse goes on the unit and they work with a patient with dealing with psychosis, they are able to appropriately assess them and provide evaluation and plans. Um, so it's a really great way to, to assess uh, their skills. If I can jump in, one thing that um, we've noticed, and we talked a lot about this with professional practice and with uh, peer support, which is a group at Ontario Shores of 
service users that have been willing to help us make live action videos. Um, there are some there are some challenges with actually live actioning out some of these scenarios. Uh, so we spent a lot of time sort of going back and forth playing with live, you know, live um, peer support individuals and nurses. We've used some animation. We we need to find that balance between something that is uh, show, shows what needs to be shown, but we don't want to um, interfere too much in people's personal struggles. And so obviously we're not going to be recording people in actual situations on the floor. It does have to be acted out, um, but that has allowed professional practice to get uh, very involved in, in developing these activities. Um, and like Mel says, I think it's become one of their favorite things. So we've, we've, been we've been able to engage Ontario Shores and the people in Ontario Shores and talent in creating many of our multimedia resources which has been a great experience. Thanks Michelle and it kind of brings it to the next point where how are we actually providing that uh, resources in terms of marketing our microcredentials once they're completed so you can have your feedback on that. Yeah, so we're going to talk about this next, but we were really interested to poke in to find out, you know, what are others doing? Do you, do you feel you have enough resources to effectively market and promote the work that you're doing? So that one probably took less than 30 seconds. <laughs> All right. Disagree. Well, Mel? Yeah. It, and yeah. that's that's one of the things that we kind of identified and we'll talk a bit about it later of challenges is is we know that it takes a lot of, of uh, resourcing um, for uh, developing them and then also promoting them. We want to make sure that we have that excitement to provide the micro credentials. And in the beginning, it, it is quite difficult because it's new. No, not very many people know about it. And I found um, for us, a lot of it was word of mouth. So once we got those started and people were more interested and they've heard about it, it kind of spread really, really rapidly. So we'll talk more about that after, but thank you for sharing. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to segue into marketing because that's something that we co-work on. We collaborate again uh, between Ontario Schools and Talent. So I'll speak to the talent part. We actually do have a marketing department. Marketing uses multiple social media sites to advocate for our offerings that are coming up. The model that we work with Ontario Shores is that while they um, we work collaboratively on the product, talent is um, able to sell and promote these outside of Ontario Shores. And that's part of Ontario Shores' um, goal as well, is to promote the great resources that they have internally with people not only just within Durham or Ontario, but ultimately across Canada to ensure that they're um, able to be you know, leaders in mental health and, and supporting nurses and allied health in this area. So we got a marketing, um, we've also got a sales department, so we've got people actively selling. And, um, and then of course, there's the internal promotion, which Mel can tell you a little bit about. Yeah, so being a, a, a public health hospital, we don't have all the resources we'd love to have, um, but we do have a lot of great internal promotion. We have newsletters. Um, we do have an internet. So usually we have that on the front page. As soon as you go onto the internet as an internal employee, you can see it right away. Um, we've also have provided, because we're, we're connected to two other psychiatric facilities within Ontario, um, we also provided that same promotional material that talent has graciously created for us. Uh, and with us um, sent, and sent it out to those hospitals as well. So the nurses that are um, currently uh, taking these courses are not just from Ontario Shores, they're from those other two sites as well. And then we're going to be promoting it to others, um, to other hospitals. Um, so yeah, that's that's more of our internal promotion and it's been very successful. Um, we, all, we also have done uh, around the units. So we brought some posters around and just showed all the nurses that are kind of working uh, that front line. Yeah, super. 
And you know, as far as now that we've we've done all this great work, and and it's it's quite the journey, but but quite a lot of fun. I'll be honest with you. Uh, we now deploy, and so talent provides the learner support. Ontario Shores also has learner support. Uh, there is a project manager that um, works at Ontario Shores that sort of oversees everything, and and will reach out to us if anything awry um, comes about. But in general, you know, we have your typical learner issues. You know registration a bit of tech support um, some questions about length and, and assessment that kind of thing with the learner support team that talent provides um, that is sort of business day access to someone via email to support that along with that and Mel mentioned that they, that she's a skills coach each cohort, so we do offer these in cohorts of six weeks, each cohort has a dedicated skills coach, and that person is someone often from Ontario Shore, sometimes the SME wants to be the skills coach, um, that is paid by um, a paid contract by talent, and the skills coach is in many ways the sort of the glue that uh, focuses on encouraging and engaging the learners. Uh, we mentioned that we have a very robust discussion and um, I, that could be a whole other webinar to be honest with you. We're not gonna go down that rabbit hole, but we've worked really hard to make sure that our discussions aren't discussions um, and that we create a learner centered uh, area for learners to really go in and engage with each other and learn together. So. The skills coach is very much involved in that um, and available to answer any content questions as well as to grade the skills verification activities, which are pass fail. So it, it, it is a pass fail, but learners do get an opportunity to resubmit because, um, again, we want them to be successful, but they, they cannot pass unless they successfully demonstrate the skill. Um, Talent also, um, you know, we manage the uh, all the access, all the tools that are used. If there's any tech issues, talent uh, works with that. Um, and then we coordinate a lot with if Ontario Shores hears anything from maybe their staff, um, will talent will get right on it, and and we're responsible to make sure that these micro credentials run smoothly and that learners have a fulfilling and meaningful experience. So we could jump into the next poll. Um, that question is really about uh, feedback. So we, we again, we're on this journey, we're on this road, we're getting, we've, we've now offered the, the micro-credential and now we're gathering feedback because that's a very important part of our process. And I'm just interested in how satisfied you are with, with your current system and processes for gathering feedback. So it's, a, are you satisfied, agree or disagree? And if we could see the results. Okay. Um, I know that quality is difficult. <laughs> I've worked a lot in quality and um, programming course quality. Uh, we struggle with it too, I'll be honest with you, uh, simply because it's, it really is delving into human nature and the human psyche. So we're going to talk a little bit about what we're currently working on. It is, it's a work in progress. We're constantly meeting and talking about how we can improve. So we could just close that poll. Mel's going to talk a little bit about what Ontario Shores does to gather this information. Yeah, so we're actually very fortunate that we have a robust uh, research team at Ontario Shores, which also includes uh, someone who's a PhD in uh, uh, evaluation research. So we're very lucky and fortunate to have her. So she's been heavily involved in our feedback uh, as well, um, where we have about three phases of that evaluation. And that kind of starts from that beginning where we have that beta uh, micro credential, as I mentioned, as we go on and move forward to get that final product that we're going to present out. Um, so this kind of brings us to that next piece of where we're looking at that evaluation piece and how uh, we can really create a, a, um, a great product. 
Um, so the first thing we look at is really that content, that structure um, and the competency within that. So do we find that it was enough to feel uh, that competency when we do the, the questions? So I'll show some of those uh, after. Um, and then once we create or, or make changes from that feedback, then we go on to our step two, which really looks at that acceptability and delight. So she really gets excited about that delight piece, which I think is so interesting um, when it comes to presenting, because you're not just putting it out there just to get the numbers. You really want the, the, the learners to, to have a great time getting that, that those skills and to be excited about the program because we want them to come back and we want that word of mouth. Um, so that uh, that piece there is so important, that delight piece. Um, and then once we get that kind of uh, brought in and, and we, we learn more from that, then we focus again on the content and the experience. Um, going on to the final product uh, that we're going to be presenting out. So again, we were very fortunate to have many nurses that were excited about the micro-credentials and they took the beta, gave us all the feedback that we needed to make such a great final product. And we've gotten great feedback since. Um, so this is just examples of some comments that we've gotten in terms of experience uh, within the micro-credential and that's at, with our final one. Um, so taking all that, as I mentioned, all those feedback from those betas, um, putting it into those three separate section evaluations, and then now we had uh, a great uh, feedback from the from the learners. Um, another piece, sorry, I just want to make sure I'm checking the chat too. Another piece is that delight, as I mentioned. Um, so this part really, I learned so much when she was actually presenting this to us in terms of that, that uh, evaluation piece is that surprise and happiness and delight. And it's so important. Um, as we know, sometimes when we have to do our mandatory trainings, it's not so exciting, um, but it's great to have that feedback to know that these are exciting and they do want to participate and they are looking forward to, to taking more of them. So we did get a lot of great feedback once we've done that final uh, review. Um, so you can see that here, um, you know, a lot of them did have quite often experience happiness and delight and uh, and surprise. And so I was surprised by how much surprise that, that they had. There were so many comments about how great it was and, and how some activities came in and they weren't expecting that. So it was really nice to see that surprise element as well. So that was just a little bit about our evaluation. So I'll move on to the next slide. Can I jump in? So I'm just going to yeah. quickly, there's a question in the chat. Um, how, uh, how often are learners, well, it's not about evaluation, no, it's about something else. <laughs> how many times are learners able to re resubmit an assessment? Currently, we have it that they resubmit once, but they do get um, personal coaching from the skills coach. Uh, so, you know, they're not given the pass but the skills coach will support them to build those competencies. Um, again, our competencies are very narrow. So we're not looking at someone to do a wide range of skills. We really focus on, you know, maybe filling out a soapy note based on observation. And usually that's something that just needs a little bit of one-on-one -on -one coaching to achieve. The second question is, is there a practice activity before the assessment or do they go straight into the assessment? There's always practice. Um, we try and give them lots of opportunities to play around, um, both just to use the technology. So maybe use Google Form in for something not graded before they actually submit a graded activity, as well as opportunities to practice um, in a in a graded situation so I know you know it's usually a pass felt the from the one competency but we might give them three different scenarios with the anticipation that the first their first submission might have a, um, a little bit more of a weakness uh, and then with coaching they're able to then build that that competency to the point that by the final skills verification activity, they're pretty much nailing it. Um, and so it's not just about a once off pass fail, it is about a journey um, through multiple practice um, moments for the learner. Mm -hmm. And that's a great, great question that you've asked because it does kind of tie into that evaluation piece. Uh, because for our first beta, our first ever micro credential, we had a mental status assessment that they had to, to uh, complete. And so what we had done for the first one was to have one at the end. So you had examples throughout, and then you had one for that skills verification at the end. But some of the feedback was, well, they didn't get enough, I didn't get enough practice to really get prepare myself for that skills. So we took that feedback, we brought it into the final, 
And now um, on week two, three, four, and five, they're able to actually provide that activity um, and do that mental status assessment before the skills verification. So we did include that within that. So thanks for asking that. Oh, response rate. Um, yeah, so I have to reach more into the research department. They, they really dealt with that. Um, I know that we did have a really great response rate. We did have a percentage that we were looking for. I know the minimum for us were, was at least 20% of the learners, but we got at least 40 to 50% of them that were, that were responding, especially in the beginning, probably a little bit more. Um, but more recently, where since we've been kind of uh, bringing out more and more of our micro credentials, maybe a little bit between 40 and 50 percent. And if I can jump in, you know, the, the sample size is small because often when we launch a micro credential for the first time, it, it is a prototype. So we are sort of putting it out there and garnering um, feedback from learners so that we can then go in and um, go into the next stage. So we actually uh, work on our development in you know three cycles. We recycle through it three times before we um, consider that we've we've looked at all the different important elements, and then we can actually uh, consider it a final product. And so actually that jumps me into, um, we're going to do a quick poll and I'm going to talk a little bit about that because I think I can, when I talk about revisions and relaunch and after this poll, that would be a great way to segue from that question. So I know quality processes, um, again, you know, do you have a quality process? It's not just about gathering the information, which is great, but it's not useful if it's just data. So we're interested to know how do you feel the process is from getting that data from learners and then actually having it implemented and actioned into um, the re revision of your training and learning. So let's give you another five seconds. And if we can have a look at that. Okay, that's great. So majority here is saying you agree, which is fabulous. It's it's wonderful to hear because it's it's time consuming to gather that data. And we certainly, I know that's important for us. And, and on the next slide, I can sort of talk a little bit about what um, the process is. And if we can just have the poll, yeah, there. Uh, so we go into then, now that we've got the feedback from learners, we go into revisions and relaunch. And again, I mentioned we do sort of three, three versions of prototype um, before we consider that product. Um, we call it gold, but pretty much it's ready to go. Um, once it reaches that final stage, uh, it goes on to a two-year revision cycle. So the instructional designers, we're really going to be fairly hands-off on that unless we get any feedback that a link's not working anymore or something's come up that we need to deal with. We, we're pretty much flexible. We deal with it right away. But we're not going to look at it for about two years, depending on the topic. If it's something like law, we might look at it you know, more, more regularly. But therapeutic communication or something along those lines, two years is probably very reasonable. And taking the, the comments, you know, because we've got such rich um, information from the learners and they really encourage, especially the learners and the prototypes, they know they're part of a prototyping process. And so they, they're, um, they're asked to, to support us and be part of the, the, tr the development process by actually giving us that feedback. And um, I must tell you, nurses are a great bunch when it comes to wanting to be involved in education and training. There's they're such a great crowd for that kind of thing. Uh, so again, we might have small numbers at the very beginning, but we get very good feedback. Um, and another, another way that we get feedback, which is, um, I think, a consequence of a lot of the learners being from Ontario Shores and knowing Mel and the project manager and the you know all the team the professional practice team at Ontario Shores is that Mel you can correct me if I'm wrong I believe you get stopped in the hallway um, by learners kind of telling you about their experience and 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 sharing you know some you know maybe some of their challenges but also a lot of the successes 
Yeah, that's one thing about uh, being one of the the support team is that I'm kind of the face of it now. <laughs> so yeah, I do I do get stop, stopped in the hallway, but it's great because I always get such great feedback. So it does feel really good and also get that feedback of, you know, maybe this isn't working. Is there something we can do to make this better? So definitely I always bring that back to the team and that that's part of evaluation too, is just getting that one-on-one -on -one feedback too. Yeah. Um, there's a question in chat. Do we have a document we can share on our micro credentialing process? Uh, very helpful. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, if if the person could maybe give me a little bit more detail, to be honest with you, we have tons of documents. I certainly don't want to send you something that's not useful. Let, if you could um, re-enter in the chat kind of what specifically in mind you you would like to see um we can certainly we might have to circle back to you so if you also okay with sharing your, your um email um we can we can definitely get back to you and we are going to be sharing our contact details with you at the end and and you have them already so please don't hesitate at any time what what we'd like to do um we're just going to do just a little fun little get you going get you typing a little bit is um if we could have that uh padlet url put into the uh, chat we wanted to end off with challenges and opportunities because we certainly acknowledge that we faced challenges um at every phase, um, we've learned constantly. Every time we try something, we learn, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly. And, and really that's part of a journey that we're doing together as a team between Ontario Shores and Talent. So I think that's another part of that relationship is we celebrate together and we deal with challenges together. Um, there's never a situation where one side feels like they're, you know, put on put on the spot for anything. Everything that we've done and, and worked on is agreed to by by the group and and that has been such an amazing experience again of really working in a collaborative way not just okay we're going to partner with you you go do your own thing we'll do our own thing this model is completely different everything is so interwoven um it's quite complex which is, again makes is a challenge um but the opportunity for us to really support learners and to to meet them on the floor where they need to be because we're so in tune with what's happening on Ontario Shores has been invaluable. It's been a fabulous experience. So if you want to take a moment and just jot down um, either thoughts you have about our challenges and opportunities with our model or potentially challenges and opportunities you're facing, please just take a moment. We would love to sort of get some feedback from you about what's happening on your end. Um, we certainly can talk about ours for a while. Um, I would certainly say the opportunities have been abundant. Mel, do you find that? It's just, um, I mean, the yeah, fact, yeah. fact that you're now a voice actor, I think is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually have to say the number of micro credentials that were expected was a little bit daunting when I first started the program, but now that we're going, I feel like we just keep coming up with new ones and yeah. getting excited for the future of what we can provide. And even the activities, I find that we're always finding new ways of, of making it fun and interactive. And it's been so great. So I totally agree with that too. That's one of the opportunities for sure. Yeah. Um, so please share with us any of yeah. your thoughts. Um, we would love to see that. And, and Mel, Mel did refer to um, the number of micro-credentials. It's 27, if anyone's wondering. Uh, that's the mandate from the leadership at Ontario Shores that they wanted to 27 micro credentials to support not only their staff but um, nurses and allied health across the province and and the country so i hear what you're saying 27 is quite daunting but we've we've really um found a way to work together that's made this quite quite seamless we've got we've got a rhythm which is nice So we'll give them a few minutes just to fill this out. Yeah, I see lots of challenges in there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I put in there that, you know, our challenge is that it's resource heavy, and it is. We can't deny that. I mean, we're so intertwined with multiple people at Ontario Shores. And then, like I mentioned, talent as a marketing team, a sales team, instructional designers. It is resource heavy. 
um, however it's paid off, you know, talking about marketing, sales and promotion, so Talents has been able to provide that for Ontario Shores. We actually have people that specialize in that. Um, and I know from, you know, just my experience in post-secondary, that can be quite a challenge. I'm wondering if Elisa's letting me know we're running out of time. I saw her jump in there. <laughs> Uh, I'll probably I'll, I'll, start, I'll start speaking to some of the things that I'm seeing in the the challenges and kind of how we face those. Um, so, for example, the ship with too many captains, that's definitely something that we really had trouble figuring out what do we want from these micro credentials and how we can we make them work for our for our learner communities. Um, so I'm noticing that you're saying that it can be frustrating since micro credentials are so new and so everybody has so many ideas. Um, I think for us anyways, uh, uh, the idea of really focusing on what skills are we trying to uh, present and, and, and extract from these uh, participants and learners, uh, that has definitely helped guide our practice in terms of how we're going to present the content. So as Michelle mentioned, we usually focus on that skills piece first before we even create any of the content or the activities, because that does give us a good guide in, in terms of that. Any, any comments on that too, Michelle? Yeah, no, I mean, you know, we, we, we can talk about micro-credentials as one unit and, and we're, um, I think at Talent, we're looking at multiple ways, not just micro-credentials, nano-credentials, you know, nano-credentials and, and stacked credentials, which I know have been talked about in the post-secondary sphere for quite a while, but it, it, it can get very complex. Um, I certainly know that Ontario Shores and, and Talent has spent a lot of time talking about structure uh, and a lot of that work was done up front to make sure that once we started working on this, we all aligned, we're all on that straight same path and agreed to what our goals are and how this is going to work. So while there are many captains, um, there is also a way that we all have to cut, you know, we have to come to agreement. And of course, there's leadership at talent, leadership at Ontario Shores. It's up to them to steer that ship in the end. And we take their guidance in, in which way they want to go. Yeah, and that was right. one of the things that we identified as the challenges was trying to make sure that we are aligned in terms of what we're looking for and what we're, we're hoping for. Um, and I think, as Michelle mentioned, building those relationships and that, that respect piece has really helped us to, to align that. Um, I'm just looking at the other comments here as well. Yeah, if I can jump in on the one about recognition of micro-credentials, uh, for sure, that's that's a challenge I think we're gonna be facing, unfortunately, for a little while longer as we, uh, you know, as um, educators really start to push the terminology. I mean, in many ways, micro-credentials in the old days were called workshops and or say had some other name. Uh, it's really about us getting, um, it's not so much I think about the name, it really is about the, the consequence and the return on investment and the transferal of the learning into the workplace that needs to be the focus. Um, that for me is where micro-credentials really have stood out in, in those short little spurts of of defined training um, and we see that even in when we work with Ontario Shores I'm not 100% sure if learners know that they're in a micro-credential to be honest with you um, but they know that they're in a very short structured learning experience that's built to engage them and to, and to help them grow. Yeah, the, the development, because it's so new, it is something that's kind of, like you said, everyone is expecting that traditional post-secondary uh, experience. So it, it's so important to, to just identify that this is something completely different and it's not expected to take, it's not supposed to take a lot of time as opposed to other um, um, extra courses, uh, but it's definitely has been beneficial on our end. Um, and just that, and the note about someone saying in post-secondary, the challenge of, of leadership maybe not wanting to invest in micro-credentials, um, that, that's, that's one of the new, unique ways that talent supports industry and in that we were, we were created for that very purpose. You know, we are a subsidiary of Ontario Tech University, but our mandate is to build short, rapid learning cycles, not to build degrees and, and post, you know, post diplomas and degrees, et cetera. Um, I think in some ways there needs to be a real a shift in looking at 
I think the uniqueness of us is that we are separate and talent has been allowed to play in a space that isn't always available in your typical post-secondary structure. And it's been very successful in, in the way that it does that. So, you know, part of a university, but also um, allowed to play in, our, I suppose, our own sandbox. I don't know if, um, Elisa, if you'd like us to throw it out for some questions, because I know we're getting to the end of our presentation. Well, you've done a really fabulous job uh, managing the questions. There's just one that I saw in the chat that was, um, how do you select your learners for the prototype? And do you have a specific number that you involve in the prototyping process and why? Um, yeah, so from Ontario Shores, um, a lot of it was uh, we had learners that we knew were interested in micro-credentials, um, especially when we started to talk about it more with team meetings and management meetings. So we a lot of times we would really um, kind of lean on our managers and directors to provide some, uh, some staff who are either new. And as I mentioned, I, I coordinate orientation at Ontario Shores, so I know all the new staff that come on. Um, so I made sure that we had a good collection of, of new staff as well. Um, and as, as I mentioned, as well as the managers presenting um, clinicians, they thought would be very beneficial to have really good, uh, insightful feedback with our prototype. And as far as numbers go, Mel, yeah. I think, did, have we not had sort of like eight to 12? Would that number sound about right for our prototype? Um, yeah, for the first one, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we obviously want to have enough that's going to give us some usable data but not big enough that we're throwing this new product out <laughs> you know, to a wide audience just yet yeah yeah and I think as as we went along we we added more and more uh, of uh, the, the uh, learners which helped us to get more insightful feedback as well once we had those those more as I mentioned that delight and and uh, once we got to that third piece where the final one is coming well, I have to say, I mean, if there was a theme for this presentation, it was absolutely collaboration and it came up obviously often in a lot of ways. But one of the things that really struck me was the creativity that came from that. I mean, and not just it sounds like in the actual output of the micro credential, but in the models and process mm -hmm. itself, like, you know, I mean, one of the things that came up in the air poll was people say, I don't have the resources for micro-credentials. And obviously, you know, it's even an innovative model of how do you, how do you come up with the resources for it? Uh, so I thought that was really um, interesting. So I have one question for the two of you, which is what surprised the two of you in the, this process of working together and collaborating? What do you think, Michelle? I was <laughs> You know what, I, I've never um, in traditional post-secondary and everything's just, everyone's just trying to get stuff done, which I get, that's the world we live in. I'm surprised that two institutions were able to pause and take a moment to really do this thoroughly, mm -hmm. um, to do it and to do it with all, all hands in, uh, everyone with 100% commitment. I think that surprised me. I'd just never been in that experience before. And so, you know, just really grateful that we've been able to work with such a, a lovely group on that. That's That's been my surprise, a delightful surprise. <laughs> yeah, I would I would say that for sure, especially someone as myself has come from frontline. It's so nice to see how dedicated that our senior management mm -hmm. is to make sure that we're prepared for the work that we do, because it's tough. It's very tough to be a mental health nurse and yeah. to have that support when, especially if you're a new grad, like I'll be honest, I was a new grad coming into mental health, had no idea what I was doing. Um, this would have been so beneficial. So it's so nice to see that, you know, there is uh, advances and there is you know excitement in terms of, of building those skills um so yeah my surprise definitely would be I am having way more fun doing it than I thought I would <laughs> it seemed like a lot of work and it was very daunting because I already have so many other projects um but it's my favorite project I love it and I'm I'm really excited and happy to work with the talent team for sure thanks for asking that yeah. <laughs> well thank you um we have two minutes left is there anything you wanted to close on before we pass it over to Robert 
Oh, oh, you're on mute, Michelle. Oh, I'm on mute. mute. Oh, oh, that's why I mute mute myself. Never. Just, I, I, I can't. Um, Mel, do you mind just putting our contact slide? So as I mentioned before, you know, we're very happy to, to connect with you. Uh, we've lots of lessons learned now and there are about many, many more lessons to learn. And we are very collaborative. I hope that, you know, as Elisa said, that's come out. We're, we're very keen on connecting, you know, making more connections within our communities, um, building more relationships and learning from others as well, because we certainly know that we've got a lot to learn as we go on this journey. So feel free to reach out to us. Um, we've got our emails and you can check us out on LinkedIn and we hope to hear from you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you to both of you. I'm sure you have inspired um, a lot of people watching with an actual output as opposed to something in theory, something you've actually taken out and um, and made work. And so I thought it was uh, fantastic. I really appreciate your time and your effort in putting this together for us and to share with everybody on the call. And with that, I will pass it over to um, eCampus Ontario CEO, Robert Luke, to close out the day. Thanks, Elisa. And thank you, Melanie and Michelle, for a wonderful and engaging presentation. I think it's really fitting to talk about the importance of uh, partnerships and collaboration and, and uh, the various uh, traveling uh, companions we meet along the road. Uh, to developing micro credentials. I just I'll pull up a couple of things from the day that uh, really resonated with me. And I'll start with something that Michelle said at the start, which is that this is a story about relationships. This is really a common theme as it relates to the development of partnerships broadly, but also the importance of listening. And by that, I mean to the needs of learners, of course, and also to the, the needs of businesses and employers and and I think also the particular contexts in which people work. And uh, one of the things I really liked about your uh, presentation, um, first of all, really excellent process on the, you know, the design, development, evaluation, uh, and refinement. Uh, but I really love the focus on learner evaluation, and especially on acceptability and surprise, happiness, and delight. I think that's really important because you know when we want to generate sticky knowledge and we want to you know engage the the cognitive the affective and the psychomotor aspects of learning that to go from head to heart to hand we want to be able to uh, really engage people in surprise and happiness and delight is a, a wonderful way uh, to encapsulate that um i think if i work backwards from the the pro the program today i just want to pick up on the you know the, the that theme of listening and partnership and and also the particular context in which uh, people uh, are working uh, allison did a great job of talking about supporting small businesses in remote and rural communities and you know the the importance of providing this meaningful business training for small business owners who are who are coming from you know a really diverse array of backgrounds and uh, just like a sheer, sheerly vast for, uh, variety of uh, of places in the uh, up in the north, and really what I took from that was that the scale of entrepreneurship is really vast. That the the amount of people who are uh, starting their own businesses through great programs that um, that you're running there. Uh, up in the Northwest Business Center, I think are you know really telling about the the general ingenuity and drive, and uh, and what entrepreneurship means or what it means to to support folks who want to start their own businesses and and I guess for me that shows the power of micro credentials to spark ingenuity and also that uh, Rocio did a nice job of pointing this out that our theme is pathways for jobs. But they, those pathways may be for the job takers, the people who are taking the job, or the job makers, the entrepreneurs who are supporting social and cultural and economic development and creating opportunities for themselves and, uh, and others. Uh, the importance of digital literacy and scalability to businesses in the North is also uh, really important. Uh, the um, presentation by uh, Adam and Ashley from First Nations Technical Institute uh, was really, uh, really, really inspiring for me. Uh, I really liked the way they linked the traditional ways of knowing and, and uh, learning to micro-credentials with the approach of learning bundles. 
I especially like the prior learning recognition and renewal. And what a great way this is to acknowledge, is, acknowledge what experiences and, and the gifts, as they put it, that folks are bringing to the learning activity. And that's really important. Uh, yesterday, I was talking about uh, the how many of the population in Canada have a, a tertiary credential already. And in particular, for those who are new immigrants and Indigenous learners, that micro-credentials represent models of practice for access on the one hand, but also for recognizing the work uh, and the learning that people have had already when they're coming to, uh, to our in institutions. Uh, one of the things they talked about also was the importance of ongoing relationship maintenance to support micro-credentials throughout the inception, design, development, and, and their deployment. Uh, and I think that uh, that's really important that it's incumbent upon all of us to develop relationships and partnerships and make them deep and uh, help them be uh, longer lasting. Uh, certainly, that's where Raad ended uh, with uh, his presentation with Amanda from the Ontario Vehicle Innovation Network, uh, and the you know his final words of working together in collaboration, and uh, really impressed with the work that they've been doing about developing deep relationships with the the you know the huge uh, mobility sectors, and and it really is a, a collection of sectors. It's not just automotive; it's mining. It's uh, you know, manufacturing, it's computation, uh, human factors, everything in there, uh, which is such a major component of uh, Ontario's economy. Uh, Rad mentioned one thing uh, about the context of developing relationships about how it's enabling innovation to thrive. And, and I was struck by how both he and Amanda talked about uh, putting in place the conditions for success across the spectrum of inputs to the automotive industry. You know, the this is a set of industries that's enabled by technology, but fueled by a complex amalgam of people, of ideas, of raw elements and minerals, even, but also the know-how and the drive to uh, to succeed. Um, we're really, really appreciative today that uh, Rowan and Rebecca from Six Nations Polytechnic came uh, to open the day with a welcome and the uh, land acknowledgement. I really appreciated their opening remarks and encouraging us to open our hearts and our minds to learning in this context. Uh, but I think it picks up the, uh, the, the, the theme quite nicely of developing deeper relationships and what that means when we work in partnership to develop micro-credential programming. Uh, really appreciative also of Minister Dunlop coming to open the day with comments about the importance of micro-credentials and also how Ontario is leading the country in supporting agile educational options for learners. This is really important. The Ontario micro-credential strategy is really helping to ensure that Ontario remains a competitive jurisdiction, able to help people rapidly retrain and reskill for new sectors of the economy, like the uh, uh, all of those inputs that are Adam and Amanda were talking about. The government's support of this sector has really been an exemplar for how incentives to partnerships put the conditions in place for those of us who are working in education and industry and uh, in, uh, are, uh, are enabled to do the, the work we do that we, we just heard about in, in uh, delighting and instructing uh, and giving people uh, a happy learning experience. Uh, and I do also want to thank our co-chair and the president of Ontario Tech University, Stephen Murphy, uh, for joining us and providing some opening remarks about rethinking traditional credentials and how micro-credentials work effectively with traditional credentials. He, he, one of the things he said is, you know, he said, if, if we've learned anything from the pandemic, we've learned the power of flexibility that we have to be flexible and adaptable in what we're doing. And we do need offerings that are just in time that speak to people throughout their life cycle that aren't necessarily linked to a 13-week semester or three-hour lecture. And so that uh, transitional period, I suppose, that we're in right now, in our annual report last year, we called it from going from pivot to purpose, represents a really significant and signature opportunity that this community, i.e. all of us have, to work together and to collaborate in ways to develop these new models of education that run in parallel uh, with uh, more traditional modes of education. Uh, so with that, I'll close the day and I'll thank you all for coming. I uh, really appreciate you all coming out and joining in the discussion. Thank you to all the speakers today. We have another great lineup uh, of speakers tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow starts up for our final half day of the 2023 Micro-Credentials Forum. 
Uh, we're starting at 9 a.m. with an address by Deputy Minister Shannon Fuller from the Ministry of Colleges and Universities. You can use the same login details that you use today to access uh, the feed loop uh, platform. So it should be uh, uh, already and available for you there. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us today and participating in the sessions. And I do hope that like me, you've learned a lot from the various presenters and you're going away from yesterday and today filled with new ideas that you can bring to uh, discuss with all of your colleagues here. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.